Truth is, having a poorly made website will kill your chances of having success on Shopify. For instance, let's say you have a potential winning product, the best ad copy, and the best creative for that product. It's going to be so much harder to see results with a low quality store. If you're just starting out, I want you to listen to this very carefully. Your store is your main base and foundation when it comes to dropshipping. That way you can actually support the pillars and structure that comes on the top, you know, the rest of the components. And with that being said, in this video, we'll be diving into a live example, one that you can follow along with step by step. So that way you can be on your way to build a profitable and optimized Shopify store. Now keep in mind that this is the exact template that I've utilized to generate results like this, this, and also this. Without any further ado, let's hop into my computer and get cracking on this store, baby. All right, so first and foremost, you guys obviously need a Shopify account. Now, typically this is $29 a month, but luckily I was able to secure a deal for you guys where you can actually sign up for Shopify and get a free trial for the first three days of using it. And after that, it's literally only $1 a month. So you can be drop shipping for literally only a dollar a month to get access to this amazing deal, this amazing discount. The link will be in the description down below. You guys do have to sign up through that link, so be sure to do so sooner than later because I'm not sure on how long this deal will be active for. So once y'all click on that link, this is fairly simple in case you guys are following step by step. Just click on sign up now, click on I'm just starting an online store, and then drop shipping products, and then just know because we're just starting out. Again, I'm gonna try and keep this as raw as possible. Now, store name it can be whatever, just for now. This is your, you know, my Shopify domain. It can literally be whatever y'all want like I said it's just for you it's just for the back and you can also skip it um, enter the country or region assuming you guys are mostly in the US watching this video and then you guys want to go ahead and continue with email setup this is fairly simple and fairly obvious all right cool so once we're in our Shopify account there's some groundwork that we have to do on the back end to make sure that you're maximizing your results overall so with that being said go over here on the bottom left and click on settings so once you are in settings I just want to show y'all that if you go to plans it is indeed only a dollar per month and now this is just for your knowledge but once you click users and permissions you can actually add other people to your store collaborators you know business partners friends family members so on and so forth these are called different staff accounts so once you press add staff add their first name last name email you can literally give them you know different permissions on your store based on their role and you know you can add up to many different collaborators and many different users as staff accounts all right cool so next let's click on on payments I have already done it to save a little bit more time ladies and gents but I promise it's very straightforward it's very obvious so what y'all want to do is connect two forms of payment right Shopify payments which is basically allowing customers to check out by credit card by debit card and then also PayPal as well you want to have both of these options as payments in terms of collecting them from your customers so these are very self-explanatory like I said for Shopify payments all y'all got to do is connect your bank account which I already have right here and then for PayPal you just have to go ahead and sign in as easy as that. Next, let's go to checkout and accounts. Now, this is very important, so make sure you have everything done step by step. I already have it selected pre marked to save a little bit more time where it says customer contact method. You want to have phone number or email, have this just selected. It should be on by default. Customer information require first name and last name, company name optional, address line two optional, and then shipping address, phone number. You can have that as optional. Uh, for tipping, now, this is free money. A lot of people are generous and they will in fact tip you right this is something called average order value right AOV meaning how much a customer is spending on your store for a rule of thumb you want this to be as high as possible right so this is essentially a no-brainer so you definitely want to have this selected if someone tips that's awesome it's free money at the end of the day if someone doesn't that's all good as well doesn't do any harm at all so just have show tipping at checkout selected and then you want to have the presets at 5 10 and 15 you want to have both of these selected for while the customer is checking out do not fulfill any of the orders line items automatically automatically archive the order have that pre-selected as default and then for marketing options you want to have all three of these selected for email and SMS and then over here just have none and now make sure once you guys are doing any of these changes on any of these pages in the settings you guys do click save on the top right or the bottom right wherever it is on the screen for you okay we are almost there I promise click on shipping and delivery and click on manage all right
right, so I'm just scrolled down all the way here to shipping zones to do that on the top is my address and some personal information. I don't want to share that. And what you're going to do is just press create zone, right? I already have it basically selected, but once you do that, I'm just going to go into the zone I already created. You're going to name worldwide big five, right? You're just going to basically select all the countries, guys, literally select all the countries, states, regions, and all that good stuff. Once that zone is formed, which is worldwide big five, we're going to create two shipping zones. One's going to be called free and short shipping, and that's going to be free, right? I like to eat up the cost of shipping, right? That's a great incentive for customers. People love free shipping, especially with Amazon Prime and other marketplaces competing now. And then the other one, I like to have it called priority expedited shipping, which is $6.95, right? Again, this is great for AOV purposes purposes, average order value purposes. And you know, at least two or three out of 10 people will definitely opt in for this option. And again, it's basically just free money. All you got to do is process, fulfill and ship these customers orders out first. So in case you are having a little bit of trouble, just go to add rate. Okay. And then free and short shipping, and you can leave that free. And then the same thing you want to do for the priority expedited shipping, right? And then you can set like whatever price. Let's just do 795. So it's different. Okay. So yeah, just for now, I'm going to delete the two new ones but you guys basically got the hang of it on how to create the zone and the two shipping rates so this will apply to all of your products in checkout pretty much want to leave it standard and of course we do want to click save again on the top right or the bottom right so right after that click on taxes and duties and i live in the united states okay specifically i live in new jersey well most of my entities are set up in new jersey but if you guys are curious i do live in new york city so shout out to everyone who is from new york now you do have to collect sales tax from the state that you reside in or that your entity is currently registered in, right? So for me, that's New Jersey. And once you hit that threshold of a certain number of orders or sales, you know, it will automatically start collecting sales tax from customers. Now, again, I am not giving any financial advice, nor am I a financial advisor or anything like that, an accountant. In fact, the best thing to do is to consult with a CPA or with an accountant for anything that I have to do with taxes. This is just giving y'all, you know, some baseline info. So if you guys live in your specific state, you can just basically add that if you go to, you know, collect sales tax, select your state, put your sales tax ID number if that applies, and then press collect sales tax. Again, this is something that y'all might have to do later down the line, but if you're planning on sticking with one store for a while, which you definitely should, you know, this is something that you can do from the get-go just to save you a little bit of time and energy down the long run. So now I know there are some tabs that we're going to be skipping over. Feel free to check them out at your own time. Not really that important when we're just setting things up in the beginning. After what we're going to do is click on domains. Very important. Let me tell you why. Yes, the domain. So let's take a minute and come off of the computer because this is very important for y'all to understand and you'll see where I'm going with this. So just follow along with me. When it comes to the domain of the store, believe it or not, it doesn't even have to be a real word. What? For example, Nike and Adidas aren't really real words at the end of the day, yet they still have some sort of brand meaning, brand significance attached towards them. So we're going to apply this same concept to our domain because we're going to have something called a general one product store. This is not a general store, nor is it a one product store. It's more of a hybrid store, if that makes sense. And truth be told, I like to drop ship on general one product stores because it really promotes speed and efficiency, the two main pillars of this game. I'll tell you why a general store is not a good idea in 2023 and onwards, of course, because this is a store that has no sense of direction. It has different products all at once in different niches and there's quite frankly just too many distractions going on. We want to really focus on micro branding. And then, you know, when it comes to niche stores, you're kind of tied up to certain kinds of products. And then last but not least, this is a mistake I see a lot of people doing out there is creating a whole new one product store for every product that they go ahead and test. Hold up. Wait a minute. Something ain't right. This is not what you want to do, right? This is exactly the opposite of speed and efficiency. This wastes a lot of time, energy, effort, and money. With a general one product store, you can keep the domain name as it is, the brand assets as it is as well, such as the logo, the color scheme, so on and so forth, because it really acts as a neutral entity for you to go ahead and test multiple products in multiple niches. And you know, this will kind of come more into a visual perspective once we do jump back on the computer 
computer. So essentially when it comes to the domain, it can really be anything as long as it looks good, sounds good, and feels good. That's all that really matters for now at least. I like to utilize this tool called namelix.com. It's absolutely free. So don't have analysis paralysis over the domain name, ladies and gents. You know, hence we are doing a general one product store. But yeah, Namelix overall is a great tool that essentially utilizes AI or artificial intelligence. And you can go ahead and use that for imagination or let alone even select a domain name directly from the platform. So now that my spiel about that is done, we go back to the computer. Or should I say behind the computer? Beautiful. So I'm glad that y'all understand that on the top of the head, on the top of the dome, I just created some random domain name, you know, flameshop.com. Yes, flame is with the E. Now domains are pretty much very cheap, right? They're about 15 bucks a year. So you can just go over here to buy a new domain. Now there are other platforms that you may have heard before based on how much due diligence you did like Namecheap or GoDaddy. However, I like to keep everything, you know, pretty concise and all hosted within Shopify, just a little bit easier. Now I also recommend, you know, keeping it ending in .com. It's just a little bit more universal. It also just sounds a little bit more trustworthy as well. All right, so obviously examplestore.com is not available, but let's just make something random up for the purpose of this video. All right, so once that pops up, all you're gonna do is just press buy and go through like one or two steps afterwards. I already have the domain created, which is flameshop.com. All right, awesome. You guys are doing amazing, guys. There's only a few more things before we head into the storefront side of things. So next, what we wanna do is go over to online store store once again and click on pages. Now here you'll see three, four, five, six, seven pages in total that I have already created. These pages are basically hyperlinks with information. I'll dive a little bit deeper into each one of them, but they're pretty self-explanatory, right? These are pages that will be on your physical store. We have our about us, our shipping and delivery, refund, privacy, terms of service, FAQs, contact us, right? These are very important for the um, legal aspect of your store, right? And also for the information aspect of your store to really make sure that that your customers have the uh, resources and the knowledge well equipped with them uh, when they are on your store, especially if they are buying from your store. So like said, to save a little bit more time, you know, this is something that I have already done. These are all templates, right? That I've utilized over and over and over again. So what I'm saying is that they can be utilized for any store, right? Any brand new store, especially. And lucky for y'all, I am feeling very generous. So what I've done is created templates for all seven of these pages that you can utilize for your own store. Store. Obviously, you can plug and play and tweak and change a little bit based on your exact store or exact product or whatever it may be, but this will save you a lot of time and energy. So to access that, ladies and gents, just click in the description down below. You will see a link for this where you can literally just copy and paste. So making pages are very simple. You literally just, you know, make a page, for example, about us, right? Or let's do privacy policy and boop. You can just paste whatever you want over here, type so on and so forth, and then just press save. So essentially there's nothing crazy over here. You know, just pages, like I said, for policies and stuff like that, that are just needed for the legalities of things and stuff like that. When it comes to operating an e-commerce store, again, that template is down below, which consists of all seven of these. So copy and paste and have fun with them. So once those pages are done, click over here to navigation right underneath online store. And this is where everything starts coming in live, right? This is what I was saying when I mentioned on how these pages are going to be actual tabs, actual clickable buttons on your Shopify dropshipping storefront. So let's click on main menu, okay? I like having home about us and contact on the main menu on top. And again, you'll see this come into play in just a little bit, I promise. Title it main menu. This is all drag and drop, right? We can literally, you know, drag and drop, plug and play. So let's say we don't have about us. Again, I have already done it. So um, it saves time, okay? And that's why we have to do the pages first because they pull straight from here. So click pages and then click about us and then add and you can really position it. I like to have it in this order and then click save menu or save on the top. Now I don't like having a shop button. Normally it would go between like home and about us and then have contact after. But since I do like doing a general one product store, I don't like giving customers access to that shop or shop now button because I don't want people to see all the products I have live on my store, right? The only way someone can get access to that product page is by the URL itself, which only you have access to, right? The URL is something only you can create and see from product to product to product. And that is the whole purpose of a general one product store for customers not to see all the products, you know, up front for it to be a general store on the back end and a one product store on the front. end. again, you'll see that into live action, into live play in just a little bit. So hang tight. All right. So click on back and now it's the footer or the customer care menu. That's what I like 
like to call it. And this is how I like to have it. Again, you're just plugging in play, right? Have the pages. Once those are all created, you can just literally link them, right? So refund policy, I know I've already added it over here but that's typically how it works. And this is the order I personally like to have it in. Search, FAQs, shipping and delivery, refund, policy, privacy, policy in terms of service. So this will be on the bottom of your store, also known as the footer of your store. All right, so for the part y'all all have been waiting for, obviously why you clicked on this video in the first place. So let's click on online store and go to themes, okay? Now I have already created a sample store for you guys, all right, to save some time, hence the whole purpose of this video, okay? But don't worry, we will be diving into the depths of the sample store so y'all can follow along step by step now for themes okay themes are basically what your store is built on right you don't have to become a master coder or master software developer to put together a really good optimized profitable shopify store so when it comes to themes there's both you know free themes and paid themes as a beginner i recommend saving on costs you know saving a little bit more money so there are a bunch of popular free themes dawn and sense are the two top tiered ones but there's also other ones that you can explore um, even by going to the theme store okay so i'm just putting it out there. It doesn't really matter, so don't overthink it too much for the purpose of this video. Um, this test store or the sample store will be on the Dawn theme. So let's click on customize. This is where the theme builder is. This is where all the magic happens on the back end. All right, so we are now in the theme editor and we are in the desktop view as y'all can see. But truth is about seven to 80% of your overall traffic, depending on the advertising and marketing strategy y'all are putting in place, will be from mobile users. Okay, that's just what the truth is. So obviously you want to have it optimized for desktop and we do have it optimized for desktop, but we want to really, really make sure it's extra optimized. It looks extra good for those mobile users, right? And for the purpose of this video, we are going to be editing and viewing the store in a mobile format, because like I said, that's just what the truth is, right? You will be getting more mobile users than desktop users. All right. So first and foremost, we do have the logo right over here, which I have already made in Canva. Canva is amazing. You can literally just get so much much work done in Canva when it comes to graphic design and whatnot. I definitely recommend having a good sense, really strengthening your skills when it comes to graphic design. As an e-commerce entrepreneur, as a digital marketer, the more skills you have, the better, right? And I think graphic design is definitely something that will help at all levels, whether you're a beginner, intermediate, or advanced player. So again, I just made this very quickly within Canva. So let's click on here and this is all responsive, right? So if you click anywhere, it will go to that certain portion of the editor. Okay, it might be a little overwhelming, but I promise don't worry take a day or two to really familiarize yourself Watch this video a few times and you'll be just fine So we got to go to um theme setting for the logo and I like to have the the width about 160 pixels and all you're going to do is just upload the logo right over here right so just any file just upload it boom and it'll pop up over here now colors okay let's take a look at the theme settings everything over here let's just get that done with right that's probably more than half of your store right what really makes up of it so when it comes to colors I like having an accent color and I like having two fallback colors so typically your two fallback colors are black and white you know pretty standard and then your accent color if you already did not guess is is like this blue color right over here where my buttons, the little accents, you know, the uh, the announcement bar and stuff like that. That's what the accent color is. So um, I like having the accent color, something that's a very neutral, mass applicable to all products, okay? So I kind of have it this bluish color and this is what the hex code is. The hex code is what basically makes up that color. So the outline button and the accent one portion is that blue. Everything else is pretty basic, either black or white. For typography, I like to keep the, the heading and the, the the, uh, body font you know pretty much a default don't have to mess around with it too much same thing with layout I mean keep that default buttons you can keep that at default um, what else variant pill same thing inputs product cards collection cards um, all this stuff guys just leave at default block cards content containers media drop downs and pop-ups uh, drawers badges icons brand information again don't really have to put anything when it comes to that social media you can feel free to you know input your Facebook Instagram YouTube TikTok page uh, search behavior again pretty at default currency format you want to leave it at default where it says show currency codes cart your cart type you want to have it have it as a page so you know when someone does click that 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 uh, buy button it goes directly to um, the page of the cart if that makes sense right so let's just go back show vendor or enable cart no I like to not have those selected and now check out again just select your logo over here so your logo just pop up in checkout center position logo size medium uh, again leave all this at default ladies and gents for accents and buttons you can again um 
you know, put that same color, right? Like the blue that we've been using. Custom CSS, skip all that good stuff. That's pretty much it when it comes to theme settings, guys. That's all the back end, right? So now let's go to the section. So for announcement bar, we have two announcement bars and this is how you add them. Obviously you can hide them by just clicking here or if you just wanna get rid of them completely, you can also just get rid of them. So we have two, one says last chance up to 50% off until 11.59 p.m. Center, color scheme background one, which is white. Again, we had them set in the theme settings. And the other one is this week only, free shipping, right? So you wanna push some urgency and some scarcity. That's all I'm doing in the announcement bars on top. Uh, obviously that's also centered and the accent one is a color scheme, uh, which is this bluish color right over here. Now in our main menu, we'll have home, about us and contact. It's what we kind of set before if if uh, if y'all can recollect in navigation. So the contact looks like this. Uh, we're here to serve. For more information about our products or any inquiries, please fill out the contact form below. Again, this will be in the templates down below for the pages where I have it for all of them. And then last but not least, I also have the about us. I have it something that is relatable, right? Something that's personal for people, but also pretty broad in general, because we don't know what we're selling just yet, if that makes sense. So, you know, it says inspired with the beauty of everyday needs and the power of intelligent design. Flame is the next step in the evolution of everyday accessories for individuals. So you want to make it sound good, but again, it doesn't really relate to any specific niche or any specific product. Y'all can take a sec to read, you know, the rest of it. It just sounds good and feels good, right? You want to really come across as a micro brand, what I was talking to y'all about before. And then now in the image banner, again, you can also just click here or click anywhere on the actual um, website. And it'll basically be responsive to that template section. But I have typed out anything but ordinary in the heading, okay? The size is medium. Now, the background, I just have like any image image as a banner. You can utilize something called Pexels. Pexels is a great site to get royalty free HD images for your website or for your social media or anything like that. And I just have something broad and ordinary, something general, right? Nothing really crazy. Um, next, I have a rich text block. You can add different sections here, guys. There's like a whole bunch of sections, but Again, you want the bare minimum on the homepage, right? We don't want too much, you know? Less is more, like they say. So where it says rich text, I just have like who we are, greetings, and then I just have like a blurb from the About Us page, literally, like nothing crazy over here. And then these are all the settings if y'all wanna go ahead and go crazy with it. But I pretty much just leave them at the default. Where it says uh, multi-column, or sorry, proudly featured on, I do have a multi-column added. And I do have just some proudly featured on logos. They're like some smaller blogs publications. I see a lot of people having like CNN and Forbes and stuff like that. Guys, you don't want to get in trouble. That's the last thing y'all want to do, get in trouble. So like, don't go overboard with it, right? And then you can add um, just different logos, no headings, descriptions, link labels, or links or anything like that. It's literally just an image and it's not uh, clickable. Okay. And again, this is pretty much just left that default or feel free to take a look at it and based in based on how it's set over here. But I'm like 99% sure I did not touch anything over there. And then when it comes to the footer down over here, uh, the color scheme is accent one, which is this blue color. I have email sign up activated, follow on shop, social media, country selector, language selector, payment icons. Um, this, yeah, I just this doesn't really matter because you already have them here. And then this is like the spacing on the top margin, so y'all can mess around with that if you guys want. Um, right, it's just basically like just a padding. So just pretty much have it at this or what looks good, what feels natural when someone is scrolling. So I have customer care and I've inputted like the menu, right? We have two menus, the customer care and the main menu in navigation from before. And then I have a little get in touch. You can have your email over there or something. And then over here, that's just the email default pretty much uh, section that it really comes with. And I have enter your email to stay updated with our exclusive promos, deals and offers. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the home page, ladies and gents. So this is my product page, just a cool little lighter that I found and made an example out of it. Now I don't wanna dive too deep when it comes to you know the uh, product page itself, but I'm showing y'all so you can see on how it's structured and how it's formatted, right? It fits in very good with the theme overall and the color schemes and whatnot. Now if you guys wanna see on how I do my descriptions, how I price items, how I label and name products and stuff like that, click on this video right over here in the top right and it should take you to it step by step because this is a whole other topic, almost a whole other skill, right? So I don't want to deviate away from um, the purpose of this video, right? The main purpose of this video, which is just how to get the groundwork and foundation of a Shopify dropshipping store up. But anyway, let's just go through the funnel so y'all can see. I typically like to, by the way, disable dynamic checkout buttons. Just click on save. I just like having this one button right here. Dynamic checkout basically like um, gives people options to 
you know, add to cart and that typically goes to the cart page. And then for example, like if someone presses buy it now, you know, that goes directly to the checkout, right? So again, I just like not having the dynamic checkout. So real quick again, let's just disable this food for thought so let's go to add to cart uh check out whatever we have our quantity let's just do one and you remember we already set the color schemes and stuff like that in theme settings beforehand right so the accents and everything looks super good super congruent super in sync to the rest of your store basically so i think we skipped on the shipping so let's just go to shipping but this is what we set up in shipping if y'all remembered right so you can select whatever and by the way this is not my address so don't even think about it <laughs> and then over here pay now, right so again all the accents and everything is there our logo is there that we also uh, uploaded over here in theme settings that's why I literally said like just configuring this as almost half of everything for your overall store so that's pretty much it when it comes to store design ladies and gents no it is not rocket science and this is literally how I do and what I do this is absolutely a great framework to utilize in terms of the theme editor itself you'll get used to of it you know just spend an hour or two I promise it is not that hard at the end of the day it's all about just getting comfortable with being uncomfortable right so you know just feel free to just check things out see what clicks what doesn't what looks good what doesn't look good but as an overall rule of thumb this framework is absolutely amazing to follow and definitely the best way when it comes to getting started and there you guys go you are on your way to build your first ever Shopify dropshipping store the right way you are now one huge step closer to making your first sale I still remember when I got my first sale and trust Trust me, it's the best feeling ever. Now, just another reminder, be sure to check out that link in the description down below where you can actually get Shopify not only for a free trial, but also for a dollar a month up to 90 days. Now, I'm not too sure on how long that opportunity will last, but I do know it's not forever. So definitely take advantage of that. Other than that, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Feel free to drop your questions, thoughts, and concerns in the comments down below as I do reply to each and every single one of them. Until the next one, your boy. Boys out. Peace.